What's up, folks? Welcome to Thunder Hill West. Uh, this is going to be a very cool one. Uh, we're here for Road and Track Performance Car of the Year, and that means I'm getting to drive a bunch of really dope cars on track. You may recognize this uh, Lotus Evora GT because it's the same exact one I had uh, in my video uh, a couple months back. Uh, I love this car so much on the street, and uh, it, it just it makes a great street car. And so I thought. Not I thought, everybody thought. They should also be put on the track. So here we are, Thunder Hill West. We're gonna see how this thing is on track. The Evora GT is 3,100 pounds with the engine in the middle. It has Cup 2 tires, which our editor, Travis Akulski, has already trashed for me. And it has 416 horsepower from its supercharged Toyota Camry 3.5 liter V6. Wow, this is different. Okay, hang on. Let me get my bearings here. Crazy sharp turn in. Whoa, dirt. Okay. But a little less grip at the front end than the 911. Definitely got narrower tires. This thing has zero suspension adjustments. No adaptive shocks. No sport mode uh, for the suspension. None of that. They believe in just getting the geometries right the first time and then not having to make any adjustments later. That's a Lotus philosophy. This thing is very quick. It's very stable. It has really good, good, strong power delivery. AP racing brakes. The pedal is a little soft initially, but they are very, very good. It's got a great sound with the optional titanium exhaust. A little understeer right at that limit. Not really enough torque to drift the car, frankly. Whee! The steering wheel is so small and dainty. Oh, I love the grip at the front end. I love the compliance. It rides just super, super smooth. I love how analog it is. It's, it feels like it's really got the, the performance, but not at, the, not at the expense of feel. Feel comes before performance, and I like that here. You have to give quite a big blip to downshift, and if you give it too quick of a stabby blip, it doesn't give you the revs. Oh, what a great car these are. They're just so different from all the other cars on the market. light and revy than the Corvette. It's certainly more analog than the 911, which has gotten quite digital in its modern terms. I mean, it's really similar to like the idea of what you probably would want a new version of the old NSX to be, where it's got good air conditioning and Bluetooth and stuff like that, but otherwise is pretty much left, there we go, a little bit. It's hard to get more than like a basic kind of four-wheel push-out slide. I prefer these cars with the Super Sport tires. I just think they're, they're more predictable. Woo! The, the Cup 2s, as you saw, are great right until they aren't. Um, they, they let go a little faster and it's over 100 degrees outside right now and when these things get hot, they get greasy. I found when I put Cup 2s on the Evora 400, uh, I ran one amazing lap and then I could never catch that time again. And that's what this has on it now, whereas with the Super Sports, my time was a little slower but I was able to run the same lap over and over and over and over again you know, within a half a second or so. So they really didn't fall off as much. Gotta give it a big boot there. And I've, I've got my wide ass New Balances on, which make it a little trickier to heel toe. Now, 
given what GM is about to start selling for 85 grand, you have to be pretty dedicated to the Lotus brand to see this at 105 and go, I see the value there. But when I drive these Lotuses, I'm pretty much the only guy driving them. I don't see a lot of other people driving these cars. You can have a really interesting, dependable, unique sports car with a totally unique feel. They're committed to manual gearboxes. I mean, how do you not love that? It's got a great flow to it, this car. Beautiful inertia. And it really feels like a good extension of your eyes and hands. Especially once you get warmed up to it. After going from the 911 and the Corvette to this, it took a, it took a couple laps to get used to, but as you can probably see, I've got my feel back for this thing a bit. And it's quite good. You gotta really trail break it late to get down there and avoid that understeer at the mid corner. But, whoa. yeah, when you lift, it really sticks the nose. But I mean, I, I love these cars. I, I have continued to love them. This one hasn't changed that in the least. The GT is every bit of car that the 400 and 410 were, maybe a little more. And it's a beautiful thing. It's got a great structure. It's got a great chassis. It's easy to drive it fast. It's fun to drive it fast. It's easy to drive it slow. Uh, getting stuck in traffic is, uh, is no big deal with this thing. The air conditioning is cold. It's got an aftermarket radio, but it works good. So, very few complaints here. Very few complaints. Only to note that uh, well, GM is doing a thing now. G GM is doing a thing. And uh, that may change the game for some people. So, look forward to uh, seeing the finished uh, written product. Thank you for watching. Thank Road & Track uh, for having me. And, uh, and Lotus for letting me have yet another go in the Evora GT, which is one of my favorite cars uh, of this year. It's just delightful. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye.